Welcome to Debutante Renegade. On today's show, Diet Plateau, Weight Loss Plateau, How to Move Past It. But first, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit the alert next to it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment, and if you have a question or topic that you would like to recommend, shoot me an email, debutantrenegade at gmail.com. So, you know, I've been updating everybody on my weight loss journey over these last several months. Really, I started, I started in August, 2021. Um, and I've kind of had some ups and downs, but mostly it's been pretty steady. And I talked about you know, what I did at the beginning was the most effective, which was a dairy free keto, really strict. There were some pros and cons to that. Um, it was really, it was really tough because it was so restrictive. And I also depleted myself of some essential nutrients in the process of that. Um, but it worked really well. And then since then, I've been doing an overall lower carb diet with intermittent fasting at an 18, 19, 20 hour interval and still having good results, but slow, like really slow going. Whereas the keto was super fast. It just like melts the fat off your body quickly. And that is wonderful. Um, the intermittent fasting is slower, more like, you know, more like a pound a week type weight loss, a pound a week, maybe pound and a half every two weeks, something like that. Just like three or four pounds a month kind of weight loss, which is still great and it's still progress, but definitely slower. Um, however, I do feel like in April, I want to say like April, I feel like I plateaued a bit, like I stopped dropping. And I think there are some reasons for that. I was really sort of enjoying about the 18, 19, 20 hour fasting that I could, um, you know, I could kind of have my cake and eat it too. I could just not eat for 20 hours and then really just have like a meal and a half in my eating window in my four hour eating window. And, you know, if I had a lighter, an overall kind of lighter, healthier meal, I felt like I could, you know, maybe have a little bit of sugar or this or that. But I think that those behaviors started to make me plateau, you know, maybe having a little more carbs than I should, a little little bit of sugar when I shouldn't, because really, if you want to be losing weight, you can't really be eating sugar. Ah, it's tough, especially when you like sugar, which I do. Yeah, I like sugar, but I just can't really have it when I'm losing weight. Maybe like once a week, like a frozen yogurt or something like that, but you can't you just can't really be having it on a regular basis. So I, I was just, I kind of started having a little more sugar here and there, um, maybe a little more potato, maybe a little more carbs. And I just, I wasn't gaining weight, but I just kind of plateaued. I just stopped losing. Um, so, and I'm not ready to stop yet. You know, I feel good with where I'm at, but I, I want to keep going. Um, and and yeah, I want, I want, I still want to get back in my pre-preg pants and they're not, they're not comfortable yet. Like I could wear them maybe with like a loose shirt, but they wouldn't be comfortable. So I want to get those comfortable and I just, you know, I want to get to a place that I, I know feels right for me. So I don't want to plateau. With that said, I've in the last couple weeks, I've been doing some things to try to get past the plateau and I just wanted to share just wanted to share what I've been doing. One, I have been exercising more. I have been upping the ante on my workouts. I've been going for more bike rides. I've been going for hikes with steep incline hikes. I even started doing some interval type hit training again, like box jumps, planks, push-ups, squats, that type of thing. Um, even doing the jump rope a little bit and, and I've also been doing my yoga. So, and I'm trying to do, I'm really trying to work out six days a week. 
So that's one thing that I'm doing to try to push past my plateau. Whereas before I was probably doing like three, three days a week solidly, maybe three to four days a week exercise. I'm, I'm pushing it to six, I'm pushing it to six to, to get past my plateau. And in addition to that, I'm, I'm doing a couple things to kind of surprise my body. Cause I think sometimes our body gets in the habit of certain things. And so we have to kind of surprise it. So I had a few days last week. I haven't been as good about it this week. This week I've been doing more of just the kind of intermittent fasting. But last week I did a couple days where I was strict keto, but I didn't do intermittent fasting. I ate something in the morning. You know, I did like kind of three small meals throughout the day that were keto um, instead of doing the intermittent fasting. So I did that. That felt good. It felt like I was surprising my body a little bit. So I kind of want to switch back and forth between, you know, eating smaller meals more frequently and days where I do 19, 20 hour fasting. So I kind of surprise my body. And then I want to have, you know, some days where I do keto for several days in a row. And then maybe I surprise my body with a little bit of potato or banana or sweet potato or something like that because I do again when I was doing super strict keto I did deplete my body of some essential nutrients to the point that I did end up in the hospital with an appendicitis and I'm not blaming the keto on that but I was so depleted of potassium that they had to put me on two IV bags of potassium before they could give me the surgery that I needed (laughs) my, the life-saving surgery that I needed. Um, and so that, that kind of showed me where my nutrient levels were at. And, you know, there are a lot of, uh, I think keto friendly vegetables that have potassium, but not, I just don't know that I could eat the quantity required to keep my potassium up. And it's funny because when that happened, I was looking at potatoes and bananas, like I wanted to inhale hail them into my body and I didn't let myself touch them because I was like no that's just my sugar carb addiction I'm not gonna have it but I think there's something like if I'm looking at a blueberry now and I'm like I need that I will let myself have a handful of blueberries I will let myself you know have half a banana or have a little bit of potato or something like that I just you know I want to my health is the most important thing to me right now. I do want to have results. I don't care if they're a little slower, if it means I'm going to keep my nutrient balance good because I want to keep my immune system high. Um, anyway, so that's kind of my journey. I'm exercising more and I am doing, I am doing some strict keto days though, where, you know, those I am being strictly keto on some days and I'm kind of mixing it up between doing 18, 19, 20 hour fasting and then days where I just eat smaller meals more frequently. So this is what I'm doing to try to break through my plateau. I think I might be starting to get to the other side of the plateau, um, but I'm not sure. And again, I'm not using the scale. I don't like the scale. I'm using measuring tape. So it's a little slower for me to see. It usually takes me a few weeks to see if what I'm doing is working because I go based off of um, measuring my waist with measuring tape because that's really what I care about is is shrinking my waist size. So that is, that's my goal. I don't actually care what the number on the scale says. And as somebody who used to do Olympic weightlifting and has done a lot of weightlifting and has a more muscle mass on my body. I don't really like going based off of the scale, especially if I start working out more. If I'm going based off of the scale, I could get discouraged, you know, and I don't want to get discouraged. It's for me, if my waist measurement is going down, then I'm doing what I need to do, then I'm doing the right thing. Um, so that's how I That's how I manage my weight loss. That's how I gauge it. And since I started in August, I've lost four inches in my waist. So I know it's working. (laughs) I can tell by the way clothes fit. You know, my jeans that I was wearing then, too big for me now. You know, I'm I'm into smaller jeans. Um, So that's how I know 
what's working. So I need, I probably need a couple more weeks to see if these tricks that I'm trying to move past my plateau are working, but I'm just, you know, I'm being more responsible about having less sugar, less carbs, having some strict keto days in there, and then mixing it up between doing 18, 19, 20 hour fasting, and then certain days where I don't, where I don't. That way my body will be surprised by the fast. Then there are days where I'm giving my metabolism the opportunity to work frequently, to be fast, to to have small meals frequently. So I don't know if it'll work, you know, it's all trial and error, um, doing the best I can. Hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm determined to kind of, to kind of reach my goal and I will keep all of you out there updated on my progress. Wish me luck. <laughs> Hopefully I can get past my plateau. We've all been there before, right? It happens. It happens. Especially when you're like getting closer to your goals. I feel like it gets harder. I feel like that's where the, the plateaus really happen. But yeah, I'm hoping by the middle, end of the summer, I can be well past my plateau and feeling really good. So to anyone else out there, if you've reached a plateau and gotten past it, I'd love to hear what you did, how you did it, um, and what your results are. Are they lasting? Anyone who's got any tips that have worked, I'd love to hear. And if this was helpful for you, then I'm so happy. Thank you so much for watching. If you got a question, topic of your own, shoot me an email, debutantrenegade at gmail.com. Hit that subscribe button, give me a like, give me comments. See you in the next one. Have a beautiful rest of your day.